Hi everyone. Um, welcome to the fa first Facebook Live for Aim at Melanoma. Um, my name is Melissa. I'm the Ask an Expert for Aim at Melanoma. Um, I wanted to come on here to talk about sunscreens and the title of this Facebook Live is absolutely perfect. It's the things that you probably should know about sunscreen but probably don't. Um, we're just going to go through um, the most important things um, in choosing a sunscreen. Um, I'm not going to recommend certain brands because the most important thing about sunscreen is that you use it correctly no matter which one you choose. So we're going to talk a lot about SPF, what that means, the two types of UVA and UVB. Um, we're going to talk about the different types of sunscreens that you can choose. Um, but the most important thing is that you definitely use the sunscreen correctly. So we're going to go over what makes that important. So first thing is that sunscreens are not all created equal. Um, there's a ton of data out there as to what kind of sunscreen that you can use. Some of it's very conflicting. So the takeaway from this video should really be that as long as you're using your chosen sunscreen correctly, um, it's not wrong. So the best way to prevent and as an environmental factor to prevent melanoma and other skin cancers from forming is to wear sunscreen and, and protect your skin or sunblock. Um, what is SPF? I get that question all of the time. Um, and in fact, I would love for folks that are watching to leave comments, um, questions, things that I can answer at the end of this broadcast. Also, I like to see a thumbs up if you like what you see and also um, comment where you're watching from. That will really help us kind of target our hopefully future Facebook Lives to you. Um, I wanted to just talk about what SPF really means. SPF is sun protection factor. All it really means is how long you can stay out in the sun before you burn. Um, there has been a lot of controversy over the last couple years in terms of what is the right amount of SPF. Um, the American Dermatologic Associ Academy has decided that anything over 50 really doesn't have much clout to improve um, your protection. Um, SPF really is only applicable to UVB, which is the burn factor. UB, UVB comes down and it attacks really only the epidermis. The epidermis is the part of your skin that you can see. Um, it causes that skin there to burn. It is damaging primarily in a superficial way. Um, most sunscreens actually are targeting UVB because they prevent you from burning. Sunblock, which is a little bit different than that, um, actually reflects the sunlight. Um, those rays that can get in deeper into your skin are called UVA. UVA damages your skin at the dermis level, which is really the very most important level of your skin. Um, it helps prevent aging, it helps prevent wrinkles, and it's also where the sun can cause DNA damage to create skin cancers. So UVA is very important to block as well as UVB. Um, how do you do that? So there are certain sunscreens that will have blocking properties. Those blocking properties are primarily zinc and titanium dioxide. So the only way to really know um, whether or not you're getting those is to read the labels. So basically every sunscreen that we have, like just the spray, I bought this spray sunscreen so I could show you how to use it, but my family doesn't really use sun, spray sunscreen. Um, but like you have to read the labels on the back. That's the only way that you can know what it contains. Um, physical blocking sunscreens are a little bit different than chemical blocking sunscreen. So a physical blocking sunscreen would be titanium and zinc because they're actually reflecting the light off of your skin. Um, chemical sunscreens tend to actually absorb into the skin and then they cause the sunlight to scatter. So they're very different. Um, they block different things. Um, the chemical sunscreens tend to lose their like reflective power a little bit quicker. Um, the sun blocking um, sunscreens are actually blocking both UVA and UVB most of the time. Um, in other countries like Australia, they actually put a rating for UVA between one and five, where one protects you the least and five protects you the most. Let me see, there's a comment here. Is there a difference or should we use different types of sunscreen on our body versus our face? Um, there are facial sunscreens versus body sunscreens, Rachel, just to answer your question. Um, the difference really is more or less 
the formulation. So usually sunscreens that you put on your face are a little bit thinner. They may not contain as much zinc or titanium. Um, it doesn't mean that you're getting a better sunscreen um, for your face or a different sunscreen. It probably is close to the same. From my experience, the facial sunscreens tend to be a little bit thinner. Um, but again, the most important thing is that you find a sunscreen that you're able to reapply appropriately. So that kind of brings me to the next point. So when you're looking at how much sunscreen you need to use, whenever you apply it, you have to apply an entire shot glass, which is like about one ounce um, of sunscreen. And because we don't have shot glasses laying around our house, I actually measured out one ounce. So this is a pretty um, good example of how much sunscreen goes on your body at one time. Um, one of the other ways is I typically tell patients to cup their hand like this, put in a little bit of sunscreen that fits in the palm of their hand, and that's good for one body part. So if I was gonna use this on my arm, this whole entire pile covers your whole arm. So this is an example of a zinc and titanium containing sunscreen. Um, you can see that it leaves like a little bit of a white glow as compared to my other arm. Um, the more you rub it in, the less that white will appear. You really need to apply these sunscreens about 20 minutes before you go out into the sun. Um, it's really important to make sure that it's fully um, rubbed in so and has allowed to sit for a little bit because then it makes it more effective. Um, so that little bit covered my whole arm. You need to do about that much. It's about a quarter sized amount for each body part. So arm, arm, face, um, chest, back, and each leg. You probably will need a little more for your legs, but really it should be about one ounce. Um, the other important thing about the amount of sunscreen that you should use is that you wanna make sure that you're reapplying. So sometimes um, if you're in the, in the water, you should reapply your sunscreen when you get out of the water. Some sunscreens will say they're water resistant. You can't really say that a sunscreen is waterproof because that's not true. Um, but they will sometimes say they're water resistant for like 60 to 80 minutes. Um, you definitely need to reapply after that amount of time. Anytime that you get out of the water and dry off, you need to reapply sunscreen as well. Typically the recommended um, reapplication time is about every two hours. Um, I will say I probably put more sunscreen on my children than is necessary, um, but knowing that they're protected is more important. Um, you wanna make sure that you are liberal with your sunscreen use. <laughs> um, that's probably the, the biggest point that I can make. Um, you're not using too much. Um, one of the other things that I get asked a lot is how do you feel about spray sunscreens? Um, spray sunscreens are fine if that's the only thing you're gonna use. It's better than not using sunscreen at all. But one of the things that you need to do, and we'll use this arm, is when you're spraying, you're, you make sure you shake it really good. When you're spraying, make sure you spray. See, it doesn't spray straight. You have to make sure you get it all over, and then you have to rub it in, because rubbing it in is really the only way that you're making sure that you cover all of your, your skin. Um, there's a really cool black light video that has been put on the internet um, probably for the past several years um, that will a woman will spray her arm with spray sunscreen and then put a black light over it and you can actually see the places where the sunscreen didn't cover so if you're gonna wear spray sunscreen that's totally okay um, but make sure that you rub it in and the same thing applies try to apply the sunscreen about 20 to 30 minutes before you actually go outside um, let's see what else do we want to talk about um, oh, one of the biggest misconceptions about sunscreen is that using sunscreen alone protects you completely from skin cancers. Um, that's not entirely true. So there's some other things that you have to take into consideration when you're looking at sun safety. One of them is that you should always wear protection on your head. So um, they recommend a three inch wide brim so that it will cover your nose and your ears um, and obviously your scalp. It's really tough to get sunscreen on your, on your, you know, on your scalp. Um, yes, Nikki, the 20 minute rule applies to sunblock also. You definitely want it to dry um, on your skin for the most part before you go outside. Um, so aside from the hat, you want to definitely protect your eyes with um, 
solar sunglasses. A lot of sun, um, sunglass companies now will actually um, list like SPF 30, SPS 50 on their sunglasses. You have pigment cells on your iris. You have pigment cells actually in the back of your eye on your retina. Um, those can contribute to, um, if they get sunburned as well, they can develop a, you know, a melanoma or a skin cancer there also. Um, the other thing about wearing eyeglasses is it helps protect your um, lens from developing things like cataracts. Um, there's been data that shows that too much sun exposure on your eye and not protecting your eyes well enough um, will create early cataracts. Um, so if you're not worried about just developing skin cancer, you want to protect your vision as well. Um, the other thing that is recommended is that people really try to stay out of direct sunlight um, between like 10 and 3 or 9 and 3 um, when the UVB is really at the highest index. UVA pretty much stays the same all day long, which is why you really need to wear sunscreen all day. Um, but the burning UVB actually is at its peak during 10 to 2. So, um, you know, if you really want to protect your skin, you want to try to stay out of the direct sunlight like that. Like when you're at the beach, try to go in the morning or go in the afternoon. Um, but always wear sunscreen. Uh, the other thing that you can do is actually wear protective clothing. We get a lot of questions about protective clothing. Um, there are, there's a factor that's sort of similar to SPF. It's called UPF, um, and it's ultraviolet protection factor. Um, the tighter woven the fabrics are, they tend to have a much better protection against the sun rays because it, again, acts as a little reflective um, barrier. Some of the things to keep in mind about when you buy protective clothing is that you have to make sure you wash them appropriately. Using things like dryer sheets and bleach can sometimes damage the fabric. Um, when you have um, a swim shirt on, you wanna make sure that it dries quickly. You want it made up of fabric that can, can wick the moisture away quicker because when, when sun shirts get wet, um, they tend to allow more light through. Um, you definitely have and most of the manufacturers will put on the tag um, how many washes or how many wears or how much time your protective clothing are, is good for um, because eventually it wears out just like anything else. Um, sunscreens, just like protective clothing, have expiration dates and you should follow them. So on the bottom of the container, they print or sometimes on the side, they'll print a uh, expiration date. It's important because what happens is the chemicals tend to, after time, separate. So this is an, also a reason you don't want to leave your sunscreen in a hot car. Um, you don't have to put it in the refrigerator, but you definitely don't want to leave it out in, in your car. If you've ever done that, you will sometimes notice that it separates um, into two places. You should shake it, but if it looks like that, it's probably not safe. Um, I saw this product where you can wash your normal clothes and it add, adds SPF. That, do, that actually is a thing. Um, it's really difficult to tell how much of the additive is getting on your clothing. Um, so you really need to make sure that you're also wearing sunscreen underneath your clothes um, if you want to be completely protected. Um, it doesn't add SPF necessarily in a very consistent manner. Just like um, if you've ever gone to a Halloween haunted house and you have worn like a white shirt and all of a sudden you have like this big black spot here because that's where the detergent went. Um, it's the same thing with washing with those type of F SPF um, adding soap. So just be careful with that. Um, I don't know. I love to see your questions. What else do you want to know about sunblock? I really think that... Um, some other things that I can talk about is that, oh geez, oh, vitamin A. So we get a lot of questions um, about vitamin A, which is also sometimes called retinol. Um, a lot of times it is added um, as a, in moisturizers and especially facial um, products for um, foundation or powder that you would use with SPF in it. Um, it can actually increase some of the sun damage, so you just want to be careful because vitamin A in higher levels in products um, will sometimes increase the risk of things like basal cells and squamous cells. Um, it's all about reading your labels. 
Um, it doesn't mean that it absolutely will do that, um, but there has been some data to suggest that um, vitamin A containing products can actually cause your son to your skin to develop secondary skin cancers. Um, I was just trying to read Alice. You say Rite Aid gave us samples for the Dallas Aim Walk. That's awesome. We always like to see that. Um, and the walks are a very great place to promote um, sun safety. So um, you can be your best advocate. Tell your friends they should be wearing sunscreen. Um, make sure that your kids are really protected. They usually, pediatricians usually recommend that kids start wearing sunscreens after six months of age. Um, and before that, they really should just avoid direct sunlight if possible. Um, children's skin is very susceptible to burn um, and especially because their skin is still developing their melanocytes um, up until puberty. Um, kids that receive a lot of sunburns early in life tend to develop skin cancers later in life because the sun takes about 10 to 15 years to cause DNA damage. So you just wanna make sure that, you know, you put sunscreen on your little ones, they're gonna hate it, but you have to do it and take care of yourself too. You definitely want to wear sunscreen yourself. Um, I really, hope that we're able to do more Facebook lives because I think that this is a great way for me to connect with you guys. Um, I'm always available for you to ask questions. You can call um, the 1-800 or 188 number on um, our website. You can fill out the form and ask me a question directly. Um, there's many ways that you can get a hold of me, but I would like to hear what other topics you guys would want to talk about um, on these sort of Facebook live videos. Uh, we can talk about toxicity management. We can talk about um, things to do for fevers and managing fevers when you're taking BRAF MEK inhibitors. We can talk about um, the new uh, microbiome studies that are out there for stool transplants. We can talk about anything you want, but I wanna definitely want you to leave some comments with some suggestions about how we can make these Facebook Lives better and also how we can um, serve you to come up with new topics. Um, Rachel, you say, that you got a lot of burns and in your 30s you have melanoma. That's typically what we see. You don't really manifest your sun exposure right away. Um, it can take up to 10 to 15 years before you even start to see sun damage. Um, some of schools, you're right, Nicole, don't really allow sunscreens. Um, we've done some advocacy in the schools around where I live in Pennsylvania um, with educating teachers and uh, school boards to allow kids to bring sunscreen if they want to, to apply to themselves. I know kindergartners may not be able to do that, but we've been able to make a little bit of headway um, in our local communities in terms of, of those sorts of restrictions. Um, so I think that probably, you know, if you want your children that to wear sunscreen, you need to talk to your school directly. That's the really the best place to start. Um, Rachel, that's actually a really good idea about nutrition for cancer patients. We could definitely um, talk about that in a future webinar. Um, I think that would be a great idea. There's all kinds of data, about 100 different diets, um, and that sounds like a great topic for another Facebook Live. Um, what other questions do you guys have? Um, there is an environmental working group that read, it basically, each year reviews all of the sunscreens that are available on the market and they actually talk about um, what are the best sunscreens to use for specific situations. So some people are trying to avoid chemical sunscreens and it gives a list of those types of things. Um, or it gives a list of the best zinc containing sunscreens. Um, so I can post after the, the video is over um, some of the links to get to the environmental working group. I know we list some things. Um, Consumer Report comes out with a sunscreen list every year. Um, again, choosing a sunscreen is a personal thing. It's something that is right for you. So just make sure that you're applying one ounce of sunscreen or a shot glass full of sunscreen. Um, make sure that you reapply every hour um, if you're in the water um, and every two hours if you're not. Wear sunscreen every day, please. Uh, definitely use enough on your skin. Um, a quarter size amount in the palm of your hand is about enough for one limb or one body part. Just remember that. 
um, try to find a sunscreen that contains both UVA and UVB protection, sunblock, um, like zinc and titanium um, dioxide, are the things that help prevent the skin cancers the most. Um, again, read your labels on the back. That's the only way to find them. If you have other questions that you want to ask privately, again, you can reach me um, on either email or by phone, um, and that information is at the AMIT Melanoma website. I really, really enjoy talking, lip balm, oh my gosh, how could I forget that? You definitely wanna get some type of SPF for your lips. People forget that all the time. Um, wearing the, the wide brim hat will obviously help protect that, but you definitely want to get, um, they make sticks um, for kids for faces because some kids don't really like the feeling of sunscreen on their face, but they make like a, a, a solid stick that has zinc in it that is micronized. You can actually use that sick stick around your mouth, but also they do make chapsticks that have zinc and titanium. You just have to look for them. But that's a really good point, Nicole, for sure. Definitely protect your lips as well. Um, I think I'm going to jump off of here because I've taken up a lot of your time. If you have any other questions, um, please feel free to continue to post them. Um, reach out to me on the Aim at Melanoma website. Um, I really look forward to talking to you guys. Thank you for all the comments. Please definitely feel free to leave more comments, good or bad, so that we can learn from this situation um, and make these Facebook Lives better. I appreciate all of your um, help and attention um, and stay safe.